everyone! Welcome to Must Read Monday. My name is Gabney. I'm the young adult librarian at the Twin Lakes Library System and I use they them pronouns. For today's episode I am going to be highlighting three new books to our collection. So these books came out like in August but they are new to our show so hopefully you'll get a chance to check them out. Um, my first book is Elatsoe. This is by Darcy Little Badger. And um, cool fact is the author is Lapin Apache, and so is the main character, Alatsue. And so I read this um, on Indigenous Peoples Day, which was October 12th, so very recently. And I highly, highly enjoyed it. Um, the cover is amazing. There's artwork throughout at the beginning of the chapters. It's really, um, I loved it. And so um, this book, like, I had been hearing a lot about it and was very excited to read it, not just because of the um, representation of, like, having a character who's laughing and patchy, but also because the main character is asexual and I'm asexual. So um, whenever there are ace characters in books, I usually try to read it because, um, yeah, it just makes me feel good. And um, really quick, I'll just say about that, like, I absolutely love the representation. This might be, like, my current favorite book with an asexual main character, just because, like, you know, it was not a big deal at all. Like, you know, Ellie is already kind of out to everyone, and, like, her family and friends know, and everyone's cool with it, and it's not a big deal and she's just like yeah living her life like it's awesome and um so yeah that was cool and then another thing I love about this book is it is a fantasy mystery so in you know this book in this world um everyone kind of knows about supernatural things. So Ellie has the ability to see and interact with ghosts and she can like train them. Um, and these are not human ghosts. These are the ghosts of animals. So it's like forbidden to raise human ghosts because they're not going to come back as like who they were. They're going to come back um, angry and kind of vindictive. And so, yeah, that's a big no, no, no human ghost. Um, so Ellie, you know, is training animal ghosts, specifically her, the ghost of her dog, Kirby. And Kirby is like her ultimate sidekick and protector. And it's really fun. I'm like, I wish we could, you know, bring back the ghost of my cats. Um, yeah, so that was cool. But there's like other supernatural stuff like vampires um, exist and everyone knows about vampires. And... Um, like, there's a vampire side character in this, which was cool. And then there's also, like, the fae, so fairies, and um, Ellie's best friend, Jay. So this isn't really a spoiler, but he is, um, like, a descendant of the fae king Oberon. So, he, you know, Jay has a little bit of power. Um, he can do some, like, fae things. Um, and he has, like, little pointy ears. It's cute. Uh, and Jay is, like the ultimate cinnamon roll character. I really love him. He's like a ray of sunshine. He's on the cheerleader squad and I just really liked, you know, their relationship because, um, well, I'll get to that in a second. So their friendship was really great and fun to read about. Um, they're really like ride or die friends. Um, and so yeah, what happens in this book, so the mystery element that comes in is that um, Ellie's cousin dies and so everybody thinks that he died in a car crash but he actually comes to Ellie in a dream and tells her that he was murdered and he tells her like who murdered him and then he asks her to protect his family. So um, this is set in Texas which is like a huge state and so Ellie's family um, goes to be with her cousin's family to help them and um, Ellie basically, you know, tells them about the dream she had. She tells her friend Jay. And what I thought was super refreshing is that everyone, you know, believes her, like, no questions asked. Like, 
the like, okay, we believe that this happened and you saw him and we believe that this person's the murderer and we're going to do what we can to see justice done. Of course, they're kind of, there's like um, corruption and like a big conspiracy going on. So of course, like they are kind of doing all of this um, on their own. And so I just, I thought the mystery was really interesting and there's, yeah, it was really, really cool. Um, this kind of reminded me of like watching some of the earlier seasons of Supernatural where there's just like, you know, some weird stuff going on and like, you know, the characters are like going to the public library and doing research and kind of reaching out to friends to figure out like what's going on. So yeah, um, all around really, really great. Um, really cool. I would... Oh, one thing I forgot to say that's um, interesting is there's also like a lot of storytelling that happens in this. Um, so like Ellie's sixth great grandma was like really um, powerful and talented um, at, you know, training ghosts and dealing with ghosts. And so a lot of her stories are told throughout the book um, and are like relevant, important to what like Ellie is trying to do. So yeah, highly recommend this. And then the second book I read was Sia Martinez and the Moonlit Beginning of Everything by um, Raquel Vasquez Gilland. I hope I said that right. Um, and this one is like a super fast read, even though it's like thick, because the way it's written, like, it's almost like entries instead of chapters, so they, you know, might be a few pages long, or they might just be like a paragraph on a page or a sentence on a page, like that. Um, and so I felt like that formatting really keeps the story moving, and I've only read a, one other book that's formatted like that, but I really enjoyed it. And so... Um, the main character of this is Sia Martinez, and so she is Mexican-American, and prior to this book starting, like, three years previously, her mom um, is deported by ICE and sent back to Mexico, and she tries to come back to be with her family by crossing the desert alone and ends up dying, and so that's something, like, Sia has always you know, that's like a big thing that she's like still dealing with in this book, um, particularly because there are some like very racist um, people in her school and in her town, particularly the sheriff and his son. So like the sheriff basically harassed like her mom and would like follow her around and was like, it was his mission to get her deported. Um, and he's just like, you know, his son is just super nasty and says really mean things, really terrible things to Sia. So, um, I forgot to say there is a content warning at the beginning of this book. So, um, readers know that this book contains content about sexual assault, PTSD, physical abuse, parental death, and racist violence. So, if those are hard no's for you, just be aware of that. So yeah, obviously Sia's going through a lot um, in this book, but at the same time, like, she's getting a lot of support from her dad, who is, like, really awesome. He's a park ranger. Um, he's really great at martial arts. And so um, Sia, as the content warning mentioned, she um, was sexually assaulted. And, like, after that, you know, her father is training her. Um, Sia and her best friend Rose um, in self-defense and martial arts and like they you know train and spar every week and it's um it's really like empowering to read like he's a great dad um and a great character and I really liked reading about their relationship and then Rose the best friend um so they have a really fun friendship and they've love to get together and like watch Buffy and Battlestar Galactica which makes my geeky self so happy um and Rose she's like she loves to write fan fiction so she is like 
previously been writing dreary fic, which is Harry and Draco, and now is writing Buffy fic about Buffy and Faith. So I don't know, I really enjoyed reading about that. And um, so their friendship is like really important to this book. And of course, you know, things change with friends, like people come into your life and um, things happen. So not really a spoiler, but you know, there does end up being like some contention between them. Um, you know, people getting crushes on other people. Let's just uh, <laughs> say that. Um, there's also like a new guy in town, Noah, and he becomes very important in the story. And yeah, I, so like, I love the diversity in the book. Like I said, um, C is Mexican American, but then Rose is, um, her mom is Haitian and I can't remember, I think her dad is, yeah, they're both like Haitian. So like, that was cool and other characters as well in this. And so, like, I think the first half, it kind of feels, like, you know, pretty contemporary as far as, like, the issues. Um, it's kind of, like, everyday things that are happening. And then about halfway through, um, things get really weird. And let's just say if you love alien conspiracies, you are going to be in for a real treat. Um so yeah, this book deals with like a whole lot, but I feel like it's woven together really well. Um, like it deals with things like, um, you know, racism and immigration, religion, and then also like, you know, friendship and family. Um, so yeah, it was really, really good and I recommend it. And it's making me want to go back to the desert too and go look for like UFOs. And then my final book is Darius the Great Deserves Better by Adib Koram. And this is, oh, I mean, I need like hearts like popping all around my head right now. I read this, um, I, I read this in like one sitting basically. Like I stopped to eat dinner and I read it while I was eating dinner because it was so good and I loved it so much. Um, this is the sequel to Darius the Great is Not Okay, which you could probably read this without reading the first book, but why would you? Because the first book is phenomenal, and this is like, is it even better? I think it is. I mean, they're both so good. Um, and so Darius, he is um, fractional Persian, so his mom is from um, Iran, and... You know, he's like, you know, they're very involved in like the Persian community in Portland, which is where they live. So that was really cool to read. And in the first book, like his family had gone to Iran to visit um, his mother's parents because his grandfather was sick and dying. And so um, sadly, you know, that's also something that, you know, he's kind of dealing with in this book is like having his grandfather being so sick and dying um it's kind of sad uh so yeah there's a lot of things um going on in this book as well so this is like straight up contemporary uh there's no fantasy no sci-fi just the realness it is very real I I kept throughout the entire book being like oh my gosh this is so good this is so good um so yeah so Darius you know he's back in the states and you know things have kind of changed for him so some things to know about Darius is he is gay so he's kind of recently like found this out about himself and like come out and thankfully like his family is like really supportive and accepting of him and you know people at school for the most part are pretty um, accepting there's some bullying that he does experience um, because of that as well as because of being like um, part like part Persian that's another thing that he and his sister also deal with is people um, saying like racist things to them so yeah, those are some things that happen in the book um, but he's also like kind of like dating someone it's his first time dating and um, you know he's kind of going through all of that and then also like 
there's great conversations in here about like consent like he his dad gives him like the most amazing talk about you know consent that I've like ever read it was so good um and then other things I feel like I'm just like and then and then but there's a lot um and so Darius also deals with depression and like so does his father so it's something like previously they had had like a really tense relationship and they weren't close at all and then um that's changed and so now they're like very close and they're able to talk about like um, what they're going through and their mental health and that was really um, amazing to read and also they're just very like affectionate with each other like his you know his family is like lots of hugs and um, lots of crying so I really loved reading about like his vulnerability with like you know the people he loves and I think that's just really good and important to you know normalize like yeah men can cry and show affection and it, it was really great um so yeah I I loved everything about this book um I love Darius he's like a great character um I love his family um and you get to know some new people new like his dad's side of the family which was like really cool um and then you know his new friends he's on the varsity soccer team now so you get to you know i love sports like in books and i love sports and like anime and manga so to me i was like yes soccer team bonding um friendship yeah that's all in here it was great and also like him kind of becoming friends with this guy named Chip who used to bully him and like that like having to have discussions about that and yeah so the communication or you know it's just great across the board um of course there are times when like you know Darius is like really overwhelmed and he doesn't know like how to process what's going on or like what to say and kind of closes up and I'm like I can relate to that um so yeah this was just a beautiful beautiful book it was so rich and emotional and i really highly recommend it and the first book to everyone across the board but yeah these were all amazing and as i was talking about them i'm like they all really have these strong um, family and friendship dynamics um, and they all kind of deal with characters who are um, dealing with like racism and oppression um, in their own ways so um, they're all so good I think everyone should read them and enjoy them and talk to me about them but yeah I hope you all have a good day and we'll see you next time bye